Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Com. I'm here at a concert, sound check to be more specific, and I want to just show you what's going to happen or how we actually meter for the lighting that is up here. What would happen if we were in aperture priority? What would happen to the lights? How do we meter? Are we on spot metering? Are we on center weighted metering? Are we on matrix metering? So the first thing I want to do right now is I want to set it to matrix metering on aperture priority to see where the shutter speed is going to get read from. You know, I want to see what my light's going to look like. So let's let's look. 3D matrix metering. I'm at 3.2. I have a lens cap on, which I've got to take off. Now let's take a look up here. I am getting a reading of 250th of a second, 320th of a second at 2. Point, at 3.5. And that's what it looks like. It's not that bad right now. It actually works pretty good. Let's see. Now I'm at 200th of a second. So it's giving me a reading that's actually not that bad right now. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to wait for the lights to get even brighter on the background to show you more of an example how it's going to read for the light uh, and not read for the subject. But right now, aperture priority is working pretty well, so I want to continue to shoot here and see what we can come up with. And here, I watch that the shutter speed just dropped to 100th se of a second. So everything keeps changing. And that's one of the, the problems when you're using aperture priority is that the light or that your, your meter keeps changing. One second, it's at 3 20th of a second. One, the next minute, it's at 100th of a second. And it's always jumping around, even though the lights haven't changed that much. So that's why I like to switch into manual, and then I can lock my settings where I want them, and as light changes, I make little tweaks there. So let me see where it would work best in manual for the situation we're in now. So basically what you're seeing right now is that the subjects, the only guy in, in the frame right now that you can see is the drummer because he's got light on him, but the guitar player and the bass player don't have any light based off of what I, my settings are at. So aperture priority wouldn't be a good place to be. How do we make the changes? Well, in manual, I'll have to meter for the guitar player separately or the bass player separately. So let's do more. So I'm dropping my shutter speed. I'm in manual. I'm going to go to 100th of a second. Now, now I'm at 80th of a second. 3.2. And there I can see the, the guitar player and I can see... Guitar player, I can see everybody. It's not just the drummer that is in the light here. Uh, if you left it on aperture priority, then all that would be there would be the drummer. Let's show you that right now. Yep. And there's the difference right there. So you can see that you, aperture priority, it's being changed and thrown off because of the lighting in the background. It may not always give you the best image. That's why I switch off into manual myself when I'm shooting shows to, to get the meter properly read or shot where I want it to be. So we just had the lights change. They are now all shooting out into the crowd. That's strong light. Now let's go into aperture priority and see what the reading is gonna look like right now. Ha. Pretty funny. This is the perfect example of what's going on. I'm seeing 6400th of a second. Now I'm seeing 500 as the light changed. What happened right here is that the lights threw off my meter reading. I'm in matrix meter reading. I'm in aperture priority. And what you just saw is that everything went dark because the meter said it should be 5,000th of a second, 8,000th of a second. That's way too fast of a shutter speed to even think about shooting when you know you're in a dark situation. So if you see that the shutter speed drops or goes way high, you know that it's not going to be right. So how do you, how should you set the meter for shooting at a concert? What is the best thing to do? Well, my recommendation is to go into manual exposure. Set everything yourself. Set the ISO, set the shutter speed, 
set it all where you want it to be. Uh, shutter speed, ISO, and the f-stop, the aperture, it's all going to be tied in to each other and you're going to make the settings. Um, the reason we're going to set it ourselves is because when that light was so bright and, and shooting straight out into the crowd, we know that that's not going to be a good photo if we shoot it at five thousandth of a second. So let's turn around now that the light has changed, get into manual, and now get a photo that is going to be much more useful. I can see that the lights are very dark. So I know here, I'm going to try an 80th of a second at 3.2. And I take a look, and yeah, that's usable. But on the other side, if I was to take that very high meter reading and shoot this right here at 32 hundredth of a second, you can see how dark everything is. And the reason that it's dark is because it's metering for those lights. So the first thing that you really want to focus on when you're starting to shoot concerts or in situations where there's a lot of light like this is, is to get into manual exposure or get into spot metering if you want. But I'm, I think you're better off getting into manual because you can see when the lights are changing and make the changes up or down from there. If it gets brighter, you know that your shutter speed can go up higher. If it gets darker, you know that you can drop it lower to compensate to let more light in. It's a part of the exposure triangle which is something that you all need to really understand how to make work. So that's really it. That's showing you what happens if you stay in aperture priority and everything gets thrown off because of the meter. So that's it for now. Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. See ya! Hey guys, I told you I would let you know how you can sign up for your free photography guide, a guide to capturing motion in low light. Well, here on froknowsphoto.com, on just about every page, you can sign up for the Fronos Photo email list. That's where you get all these updates, uh, latest information and contests, and sometimes there's exclusive content that only goes out to email subscribers. So how you sign up, you put your name here, you put your email address here, you hit the send it button. Be sure to check your spam filter if you have one to see if the email got sent there, but you have to confirm your email address just so that we know that it's a real one. And once you do that, you'll be automatically sent an email with a link in it that will let you download the guide to capturing motion in low light. So I hope you enjoy that. It's going to help you start to understand how you can shoot in low light. And I know the book talks about aperture priority, but come back to this video to think about you know, how I set it in manual and why I set it in manual and the differences between the two. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to sign up here. And if you haven't added us on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, Plus, as well as YouTube, please use these buttons right up here to do so. There you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. See ya!